A plot twist is an effective way of keeping audiences on the edge of their seats. But not every surprise comes completely out of the blue. Filmmakers just can't help leaving a hint or two for all to see, even if it's just the viewers paying the closest attention who catch them. Well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. Here are Screen Rant's 10 best movie clues you totally missed. You're gonna see some serious shit. Back to the Future, Twin Pines Mall. The first Back to the Future ends with a bit of a twist. It reveals that the life Marty McFly leaves behind in 1985 is not the same one he returns to. His actions in the past have caused his entire family history to change for the better, but you don't have to wait until the final sequences for that surprise. When Marty rushes to the parking lot of Twin Pines Mall to save Doc before he's killed, it's revealed to have changed its name to Lone Pine Mall. The name change is a result of Marty running over one of Farmer Peabody's prized pines when he first arrives in 1955 first clue that he altered the timeline instead of preserving. 21 Jump Street, a familiar flavor. Undercover officers Schmidt and Jenko are given a simple mission, infiltrate and bring down a high school designer drug ring. Finding the dealer is simple enough, but finding his supplier in Kingpin proves much more challenging, but it didn't have to be. After the first two take the drug while at school, Jenko notes that it tastes like Cool Ranch. What was that? Barbecue Cool Ranch? Have fun. Just a few moments later, Coach Walters appears snacking on, you guessed it, Cool Ranch Doritos. Walter turns out to be the operation's mastermind, explaining where that flavor came from. The officers might have spotted the clue if they weren't too distracted by their own tongues. Put your tongue back in your mouth. Put your tongue in your mouth and close it. What are you doing? Stop it. Reservoir Dogs, Big Tippers. After a jewel heist goes horribly wrong, Quentin Tarantino's cast of thieves are convinced that there's a rat in their midst. The survivors are left to find out which one of their team may be working with the police. A collection of bottles hints that Mr. Orange isn't on the same page as Mr. White or Pink, but the undercover LAPD officer actually lets the secret slip in the very first sentence. First, he changes his mind to fit in with his colleague. You just convinced me. Give me my dollar back. Then, when the group asked who didn't tip for their breakfast, Orange immediately squeals. Who didn't throw in? Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink. This clearly shows he doesn't subscribe to the same code as his partners. If only they'd caught it, the movie's ending might have been a lot less messy. Oh well. Fight Club, Flashes of Time. When the narrator learns that he and Tyler Durden are actually the same person, it blows his mind. But eagle-eyed viewers weren't caught completely by surprise. In the film's first act, the narrator begins to see quick glimpses of Tyler as he battles his insomnia. It's the first suggestion he's simply a figment of his imagination begging to be unleashed. If that wasn't enough, Tyler later calls the narrator on a payphone that doesn't accept incoming calls. Saving the big twist from attentive viewers was obviously not a priority for director David Fincher. He is Jack's spoiler alert. Yeah, I get cancer. I kill Jack. The Sixth Sense, an unfriendly ghost. Discovering that Bruce Willis's character was dead the whole time is one of the greatest twists in cinematic history. The movie immediately warrants a second viewing, where viewers learn the twist wasn't necessarily a total surprise. I see dead people. It makes sense for Crow to spend plenty of time with his patient Cole, but it is a little strange that he doesn't address any other human after the opening scene. At one point, he arrives late for an anniversary dinner without his wife even acknowledging his presence. The clues are subtle enough to go unnoticed the first time, but on repeat viewings, they're impossible to miss. Man. Shutter Island, a glass half full. The movie's story of a federal marshal pursuing a killer in a remote mental hospital is turned on its head when hero Tony Daniels is revealed to be a patient acting out an elaborate fantasy. It's a shocking twist, but viewers should have known that Teddy's experience was less than reliable. When a patient requests a drink during her interview, the glass she drinks from is non-existent and returns only when it's been completely drained. Teddy's fear of water may be actively censoring what he sees and doesn't see, but regardless, it's just one of the clues that shows the investigation is not what it seems. The usual suspects, the truth is gold. Everyone was floored to learn that the unassuming verbal Kent was really the criminal mastermind Kaiser Soze, but hints were sprinkled throughout this mysterious crime drama. In the film's opening scene, the faceless Kaiser lights a cigarette with a gold lighter before setting the fiery blaze. Later on, when Verbal leaves the police station, one of his belongings is a gold cigarette lighter. One watch, gold. One cigarette lighter, gold. The same one used in that first sequence. It's a minor detail before the far larger twists are revealed, meaning deductive viewers realize the truth long before the characters in the story. The Big Lebowski. No strike, he's out. 
Since the film's starring duo spends most of their time dismissing their fellow bowler Donnie, Forget it, Donnie, you're out of your element. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Viewers might not notice that every time he's shown bowling, he gets a strike. Until his final game, that is. He seems as confused as anyone when he leaves pin standing, but exits the bowling alley to face off against a group of violent nihilists. Show me what you got, nihilist. I fuck you! Where he suffers a heart attack and dies. Turns out, his last bowl was an ominous piece of foreshadowing. What would have happened if he'd thrown a gutter ball? The Prestige. Look to the birds. A single trick lies at the heart of this tale of rival magicians. Hugh Jackman's character desperately tries to learn how Christian Bale's Borden can transport between two points instantly. He eventually recreates the trick by copying himself, drowning each time as his new copy appears to wow audiences. In the end, Borden's explanation is his twin brother, not actual magic. It's a secret discovered early on by a young boy unconvinced by a disappearing bird trick. The boy sees what the audience doesn't, but even his rival's horrifying loop of suicides is explained using the same dead bird. He's alright, he's fine. Look at him. But where's his brother? The Dark Knight Rises, The League's Mark. The third of Christopher Nolan's Batman films finds Bruce Wayne surprised and devastated. He discovers his corporate ally and lover Miranda Tate is actually Talia al Ghul, daughter of Batman Begins villain Ra's al Ghul. But her membership in the League of Shadows is foreshadowed long before she confesses it. Bruce makes note of a triangular scar on her back, which is never explained. It's very similar to those covering Bane's head, implying a link between the two. Some have argued the scar resembles the brand of the League seen in Batman Begins. But whatever the case, having a villain covered in scars suggested there was more to Miranda than met the eye. But those are our picks for great clues hidden in the background of movies. Are there any we missed? Sound off in the comments section below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.